The Gospel today proposes us to meditate on vocation, on that vocation on the first apostles. But to understand it, we must see how it happened, what was the context. The Lord had already begun evangelizing before He met them. He says that He began in Galilee to proclaim the Gospel of God, saying that the time has accomplished, the hour has come. He had been waiting for his moment for 30 years. The time had already come. The countdown started because he knew what was going to happen to him three years later, and he knew that he had only three years, little time. In this context, he was doing his ask for help. He was God. He is God. But he had to do a task of a man of a God-made man, that is, he was in Galilee, he was not in Jerusalem, he was not in Tyre, he was not in Zion, he was not in the Decapolis, he was in Capernaum, he was not in Bethsaida, he needed help. This is the first thing to understand. The Lord asks something because he needs what he's asking for. Second, he speaks to people that love God, but Simon and his brother Andrew, John, his brother James, and the rest that came, he believers, were good Jewish believers, possibly they were disciples, or at least some of them was John Baptist's disciple. That is, there were people who wanted to follow the Lord who wanted to do God's will in their lives, who did not think what I had to do or what I wanted it to do or what I would like to do with my life. St. Peter was married. Therefore, he already had organized life. He had his own boat. The other two, James and John, well, they were sons of someone who had votes because the Gospel says that they left their fair father with the day labors. They were not people who asked questions, but they were believers who were willing to do God's will in their lives. What God wanted it, not what they have chosen or wanted. What God wants for me, I love God. Therefore, to situation, Christ needs help, and He speaks to people already willing to do God's will. Third, the Lord presents the vocation as a gift, as a need to help Him, but also as a gift. He says it clearly in a very nice way. He's talking to people who have a vision. They are already are working in those fishers, and they say, he tells St. Peter, you will be a fisher of men, enough. Here you are in the lake. These fish are good. These fish are good to raise your family. Naturally, you are doing good being a fisher. You are feeding a number of people. The workers you have hired to help their families. You are also feeding other people who buy your fish. You are doing a service, a gift. It is a good thing what you're doing. I have not taken you out of crime. He will get someone out of crime later, St. Matthew, out of robbery. You are doing things right. I have nothing to reproach you for. But I ask you to do an even better thing. That is what we must understand, these three characteristics. Christ asks for help to people who wanted to do God's will in their lives, people who love God, and what He asks is good for them, even if they are have to give up something for a better thing. If we don't understand these three characteristics of Christ's calling to the first apostles, we will not understand what vocation is all about. 
When you speak to a young Catholic, of course, you will not propose this to a young atheist. A young Catholic, which still are found, fortunately, from a Catholic family or a person who has converted. When you speak to a young Catholic, of those who go to Mass, which I know many, when you propose vocation, you consider the priesthood, he considered it an option that he has like or desire. Well, I thought about it, became a doctor. I thought about becoming a lawyer. I thought about becoming an engineer. I have that. It is an option. Another option, priest, architect, or life leads you to be a sweeper which is also equally worthy profession, even if you earn less money. That is not the right approach. First, I repeat, you still have the possibility, because St. Peter left his, his wife to follow Jesus. Today, that is not allowed. But you still have the possibility, you have heard, that the Lord asks for help. Perhaps you have not heard him asking you for help, asking you for help. You have heard the Lord asking for help, but I didn't feel anything. But hey, you have eyes to see and ears to hear. You have not heard the voice of God as St. Peter heard it. Leave the boat and come with me. You have heard it. You will surely come with him. Would someone not heard the voice? But perhaps you don't see that the need that there is for priests. There is the same need for priests, for people to evangelize, to dedicate themselves to speak about God, about the love of God, about gratitude. There is the same need for these people of doctors, lawyers, engineers, architects, or that task that you are going to do dispatching in the supermarket or sweeping the street because, I repeat, they are all worthy jobs. Well, all jobs are worth. I don't refer to criminals or kidnappers. You have heard, you have not realized that the need that there, there is. Therefore, to realize that need is already heard in Jesus' voice who says, help me. The harvest is many, the workers are few. Help me. Second, truly God, Christ, is He first in your life or not? Christ is, I repeat, I'm speaking to young Catholics. Christ is something that is there. Continue going to Mass by tradition, but Christ is not first in your life. He's not first in your life, but if He is, if Christ, God, is really important to you, then the question is not, what am I going to do with my life? But the question is, what does God want me to do with my life? I see that there is a need. I clearly see that there is a need for priests. It is clear. I see that the God is asking for help, maybe not asking me for help, in this sense that He has not spoken to me with the voice beyond any doubt. But He is asking for help, and I want to do what God asks me to do. We need people who are dedicated to evangelizing, also to help people in need. But first of all, to evangelize, because that's what Christ did. You don't realize that it is much more important without detracting any profession or any word. But it is much more important to be a fisherman than a certain fisher. And I don't want to offend those who fish sardines, which is also a noble and often very risky job. But evangelizing is more important. Jesus says it. You will no longer be a fisher of fish. Now you will be a fisher of men. I want to be a doctor, assuming that you can be a doctor, because not everyone can be a doctor. I want to be a doctor. It is great. It is an extraordinary profession. Who doesn't need a doctor? A doctor. What a great profession it is. 
But in that profession, assuming that you are doing everything well, and in the end that you are not contained to desire to earn money instead of the desire to serve people, you are going to heal bodies in that profession. It is essential, necessary, that there are good, good doctors, but who is going to heal souls? Because there are many health people, but sooner or later, we we'll all go to the doctor, and then also at the end of our lives, there are many healthy people, However, their soul are ill. We are seeing it. We are seeing what its consequences of sin in young people are. The pandemic has served to make it clear to what extent the lack of God is hurting not only them, but the whole society through them. There are many people who have no money, who are well, well employed, who, however, do not God and destroy themselves, destroy their families, go to a sentimental union, to a sentimental union, to say it in a corny way, how many have they been with, how many couples have they she lived with, how many children have even been killed with abortion, the pill, or another form of contraception. These people don't need money to eat, not even a doctor, because they are the age when they are healthy, strong, and full of pride. It is much important, it is clearly because Jesus said it, it is much important to be an evangelizer than even to do such a noble task of being a doctor, which I consider to be the most important task after being an evangelizer. That it is why the Lord needs help, the need for truth. It is clear that He needs it and He asks for help his friends. He has help those who believed in him, those who want to love him, those who have put God in the first place in their lives. He needs help and ask you for help and ask you for help for something good, for the best. He asks you to pay a price, of course, but helping someone always involves paying a price. If you keep on, it means you lose the money you give. If you spend time accompanying someone who is alone, you are wasting that time doing something that will benefit someone, but to whom someone else will report, unless apparently no benefit. Only later, it turns out that the price you pay is more than paid in return. The Lord said so. He who leaves house, his land, the Lord said so, his wife, his family, his children, his future or possible children, for the love of me, will receive a hundred times more on earth with the house, with friends, with the spiritual children, and then eternal life. So today, in the name of Christ, who asked for help and found help, today I repeat the same words of the Lord. Leave your home, follow the Lord, He will make you happy, and through you, He will make others happy, help many people, and this is the greatest and the most important thing you can do with your life, so be it.